what's up guys thanks so much for clicking on the video my name is leah and baby let's get into the drama of it all so initially this video was just going to be about potomac beverly hills and married to medicine but y'all i just got some tea about shannon and john from oc so get your snacks because we got some things to talk about <laughs> let's talk about married to medicine so i know that sweet tea or leticia may did an interview with another youtuber i'm gonna be honest with y'all i don't really care and i also know that carlos king did an interview with simone and toya and i don't really care <laughs> The truth is, is like now that the season is over, I'm kind of like over it. So I wish they would have done their interviews during the season. I probably would be more invested. But what I wanted to talk to y'all about, which I thought was funny, was that why did they catch Cecil in the Freak Nick documentary? <laughs> and he confirmed it. So if you didn't know, Hulu released um, on Thursday a movie, a Freak Nick movie, which is just a documentary where they got several different rap artists as well as organizers of Freak Nick and a page by the name of Mobs World posted this they said mr cecil is this you down at freak nick at cecil whitmore and it's actually i guess they were watching the documentary and they paused it and the picture really does look like cecil and cecil <laughs> responded by saying oh, you got me this is a og freak nick before the 90s for the record at eugene harris the third and i are working on our podcast we will talk about it hashtag married to medicine hashtag freak nick documentary at hulu and then he went on to post another picture of him and his brother and a lady that his brother had a baby with. And it goes, since at Mobs World busted me out in the hashtag Freak Nick on Hulu, here is the next um, year, 1989, with my brother at D Golfer 25. Fun fact for hashtag married to medicine fans, my brother and the lady in the picture are the parents of the nephew who stayed with us in high school, um, stayed with us in high school. And I mean, Simone, when I, Simone got a good looking man. Cause I ain't gonna lie. Cecil looked like he was a good time. And his brother is cute as hell too. So I just thought that was funny that like, out of all the people that were featured in that documentary, Cecil is the one that everyone picked out. Now it doesn't seem like Cecil was a part of the bad part of Freak Nick. And he said that this was before Freak Nick got wild. So I'm guessing like when it was still like a good time and everybody was coming to hang out and stuff like that. So I just thought that was cool. I thought it was funny that like everybody, cause not just Mob World, um like stopped at that part and was shopping that picture around i saw like three or four accounts being like yo is this cecil this look like cecil now people in the comments talking about what your daddy look like because y'all is fine i scream <laughs> i was screaming i was screaming and some people are like well was he with simone i don't think he was i think him and simone got together like in the 90s and he's saying that like both of those times was in 1988 and then 1989 because the second picture with the brother and the lady was like oh this is the second time we went to freak nick and he said 1989 so i'm not thinking they were together and even if they were she probably knew he was down at freak nick but it looked like he had a fun time all right, y'all, so let's move over to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills news. So it looks like Anne Marie will not be returning for season 14 of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She decided to post a statement um, confirming that she won't be returning yesterday. So let me read it for you. It says, I just got the word today I will not be returning to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. To say that I am disappointed is an understatement. I never auditioned for the show. The show found me and asked me to be on it out of the blue six weeks after the cast had already started filming. I was thrown into filming two weeks later, mid-season. I was very excited about the opportunity and thought the following exactly and thought following exactly what I was instructed to do throughout filming last season was the way to play the game. Listening to what I was instructed to do was my rookie mistake. What I am disappointed about is that the fans never got to see the real me or even a glimpse of my unique life story. Contrary to what was shown on TV, I am not obsessed with esophagus, LOL. 
Um, what I am is a woman, a proud black woman who is truly blessed with a wonderful, strong black man as a husband who lifts me and our, our four wonderful children up with so much love and positivity on a daily. It was an important message of mine for the next season to show the solid black family unit and that the true black love exists even in Beverly Hills. My struggles with losing my mom to lung cancer within a weeks of taping and my struggles with adoption trauma and what was going to be and still will be a new life journey for me to find my biological parents all of which was taped but never shown last season among other things to fans that saw past what was portrayed and saw the real me thank you for uh, thank you so much for the love and support i wish all the ladies good luck on the next season and thank you bravo for the opportunity as an athlete challenges only make you stronger and more determined to persevere um I am excited for the next opportunities ahead that celebrate positivity, truth, authenticity, and the values I have aligned with. Until we meet again, thank you, Anne-Marie. All right, y'all, so here's my thing. I feel like there should be a two-season minimum for new housewives. I feel like that should be the probationary period for them because I feel like it's not fair to assume these women are going to hit the ground running on these shows and they're not going to be uncomfortable. But I also would like to see if they can, because I feel like it, see the second season is when the housewives get comfortable and they figure out where they fit in the group and what their part is in the group. So I am kind of bummed that Amber won't come back now was she my favorite or did I really like her not really but I was interested in seeing the shift in the group dynamic I was wondering if her and Kyle were still going to be cool if Dorit and, and Amory were going to get close if Erica and Amory were going to have like a situation or become friends or if Amory was going to continue having issues with Sutton and Crystal or were Amory and Garcelle going to be friends or were they going to have issues like I wanted to see a change in the dynamic and I just feel like constantly dropping housewives after one season I don't think is fair I also feel like Anne-Marie did a disservice to herself because you're telling us that you listened to what that was what was instructed for you to do because you thought that was playing the game and granted she's a newbie she's a rook like she said it was a rookie mistake but also girl you have the power of discernment like if you felt like you weren't showing up at your authentic and real self then you should have pulled back whether or not you wanted to be on the show or not because at the end of the day this is going to be showcased to a, a million people because that's normally their ratings is a, at least a million or a close to it so I would have just been myself no matter what like even if it didn't get me a second season at least I can say I'm proud of what I put out there because that was genuinely who I am as a person Amory allowed Kyle to push her to like argue with Sutton because you couldn't tell me it wasn't Kyle coaching Anne-Marie to do it and maybe production as well but I wish Anne-Marie would have just sat in who she was and not even bothered with that um but I think ultimately the nail in the coffin for Anne-Marie was the allegations against her husband to find out that she had filmed scenes with her mom that they talked about her being a mixed woman adopted by an Asian family and the things that she went through with that her trying to find her biological parents like all of that being cut out and her having scenes with her husband was due to the information coming about out I mean I want to say like a week or two before the season had premiered about her husband possibly SAing somebody in college and that was the allegation so it's like Bravo already has enough to deal with with the lawsuits with Andy you got Caroline Manzo Brandy Glanville and now Leah McSweeney and it's like it's a lot of stuff going on and then you got Bethany with the reality reckoning and then I think like Rachel from Vanderpump's Rules is now suing um Tom and Adriana no, I would say Adriana Ariana so it's like so many things are coming out about like you know and that situation is supposed to be like you know revenge corn and all of that stuff so it's like there's too much going on at Bravo that like I don't think Bravo wanted to touch Anne Marie after that so I mean it's great that she was able to come out and say we're done but I think this is probably like a blessing in disguise because if she did come back we keep harping on the ladies like you know we want the ladies to talk about what's really going and going on 
in their lives and this would be something that was is really going on in her lives is her dealing with these allegations against her husband and whether or not she believes them or not and how are they dealing with it as a family but that's a very serious and very like dark topic to speak about and if it's not handled with care it could go down a very horrible road for the network and everybody involved so I guess they said you know what we gonna cut cut our losses with her and move on especially with Amory's poor performance at the reunion she ain't said nothing much of like three sentences we got all of that from her in part one part two and three she was basically on mute so y'all with Amory leaving there's been like this speculation and don't I don't have the proof about this, but I feel like I saw something on my timeline about someone alleging that Sutton has said something to the effect that they are shooting or trying to figure out if they're going to bring back old housewives to be a part of the cast again. I saw some people say Irene might be coming back. I think I saw, what's her name? Is it Isabella? Oh no, Elsa. Is it Elsa? Ursula, Ursula, Harry Hamlin's ex-wife coming back supposedly. And then this other lady, I remember someone said maybe it's gonna be the lady that was complaining about her shades. I don't remember. I remember her face, but I don't remember her name. But then a lot of people were like, well, maybe Lisa Renna is coming back, but that's a no. So Lisa Renna was on Jennifer Hudson's um, talk show. And I'm gonna play the audio for you guys. But the headline says this, Lisa Renna will never return to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, but it missed the show um, made her a better actress for her upcoming Lifetime role. No, no, never. Would you ever do Housewives again? No, no, never. No, I wouldn't. She no, wouldn't. Don't get my stare. But no. listen, but listen. I'm grateful for the experience. Uh -huh. I think that it has made me a better actor because I'm acting again. Yeah. And I'm not kidding. Well, you laugh, but it's true. I think it made me a better actor working with those women, going through that experience. I just did a movie called Mommy Meanest, which I trained for for eight years on that show. Mm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I definitely did, and I had a lot to pull from. I have a lot to pull from after working for eight years on that show. And you, you know, it. different psychologies of different women. I never would have come across that if I hadn't done that show. I'm grateful for that show. I'm the person I am today because of it, mm -hmm. but I'll never go back. All right. <laughs> nope, I did it. Did it, done it, saw the movie. So that was Lisa Rinna pretty much dispelling the rumors about coming back. Like a lot of people expected her, like her to be like, yeah, I'll come back. But she was like, no, like I'm good. I was there eight years and like, I don't, I don't need to go back. Honestly, but Lisa Rinna actually gives the type of person that if you do her dirty or she feels like you're doing her dirty, you would probably have to beg. And I feel like Lisa probably feels like the um, production did her dirty. So I really feel like she's the type of person like you don't have to beg me to come back. But honestly, she doesn't need to come back. In my opinion, and her career is actually doing a lot better with her not being a part of the show she's actually doing more acting she's going to be in this lifetime movie i saw her in american horror story i've been seeing her actually show up to more like a-lister events she's been features on several cover magazines and i talked about this on one of my chitty chat videos where i was like will candace dillard get the lisa renna effect where it's like if she leaves the show it would open up all these opportunities because we can't lie that some people in the entertainment industry look down on those who do reality tv it's helped some but it also has hindered others so i don't think lisa should come back if she's happy acting again and doing what she's doing there's no point to come back i also don't think the show needs to go back to where it was i think that with her gone they're able to move in a different direction and i think that's a great thing all right, y'all. So let's talk about Miss Potomac. So first up is NECA. So NECA was actually answering questions on her Insta story. And I'm getting this by way of all true tea. And some of her questions and some of the responses to the questions that were asked of her actually irritated me with production. So the first question that was asked was, what was your favorite RHOP sisterhood moment this season? And she said, for me, it was the moment that you guys didn't see my dog Izzy was attacked by two large huskies while we were in DR. And all of the ladies were very loving and supportive of me during that emotional time. Why didn't we see that? 
I, and that's why I think that there should be a two season probationary period because you're not giving these people an opportunity to let the audience see the like both sides of them or all sides of them. Like a lot of people don't like NECA. I'm pretty much indifferent towards the lady, but I feel like it's not fair to have her on this show and we miss out on these types of moments. All they did in DR was eat, complain about the rooms. We saw them go mini golfing at night and play like tennis and skeet shooting other than that they didn't do anything any type of bonding or anything like that like yes give us the drama give us the tea do all of that stuff but you should be able to balance it by filtering in like very nice and sweet and genuine moments and that is a genuine moment that everyone was like showing up for her because it seems like that dog is like her child so the fact that we didn't get to see that I that kind of irritates me and then the next thing we find out that they that, so the next question was what was your favorite scene that was filmed that didn't make it to air this season and she goes on to say I have my family barbecue where I hosted my parents in-laws and siblings in Potomac many of my friends showed up and some of my uh, some of the ladies attended as well my family is so silly and hilarious coupled with the extraness of the ladies it was such a fun genuine and raw time why didn't we see that why didn't we see her family like this production company folk like they are they are very like one track mind type of I don't know how they storyboard this because all we focused on with NECA was the whole shrine 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 thing and then at the end of the season we're getting a sprinkle in about her her journey with conceiving and doing the IUD and all of that stuff why didn't we get to see her family we saw her sister like for two episodes but we really didn't get to see her dynamic with her sister like this company to me or this production team to me doesn't understand again the the balance like give us like I said give us the drama but also give us genuine moments so the fact that we got this like she had her family and we didn't get to see it like we should be able to see her family we should get to see her and understand another side of her and it's, I think right now for me it's just like that's not fair to me because again the same thing with Anne Marie like you only get to show one part of yourself and if it's not your authentic self or where you think production is pushing you to do then you have a bunch of people that hate you for going along with what production told you to do instead of just doing you and I feel like this is a combination of both production and NECA listening to production but also them not showcasing like all parts of her and I don't think that's fair. And then the last thing I saw that I thought was interesting was, do you wish production would have done a better job with introducing you to the group? And she says, LOL, I'm getting a lot of questions on this. Absolutely. I think there's always room for improvement. Yeah, I feel like there could have been a different way. But also, I think production should have stepped in and told NECA and Wendy to have a conversation. Like well before the whole pickleball situation, they should have had a sit down moment where they actually hashed out whatever issues that they had. So y'all, let's talk about Karen. <laughs> oh my God. Let's talk about the Grand Dame. Let's talk about it. So on March the 20th, Karen got into a car accident and it set Twitter ablaze. So this is what I saw first. So I'm going to read the TMZ article, the first TMZ article, and I'm also going to read what I saw online. So what I saw was from Jay's reality blog, and it says this, at TMZ is reporting, hashtag Karen Huger was involved in a car accident late Tuesday night after driving in an aggressive manner, manner, and too fast for conditions she struck a median and a crosswalk sign at the intersection and collided with a parking sign off the roadway and the car was damaged so bad a tow truck came to get her it is um tow truck came to get her it is because it couldn't be driven she received multiple citations but was not arrested hashtag rhop i said karen what what karen what happened so I took myself over to TMZ. So this is the TMZ article that was posted. It says um, it's the date is um, March the 20th, 2024. And it says Karen Huger tells TMZ, thank you all for your prayers and well wishes during this very frightening experience. I am still in shock from last night's um, incident, but grateful to be alive today. With the passing of my beloved mother, grief comes and goes in waves. And with Mother's Day approaching, it has felt more like a tsunami. 
She adds, last night I met a girlfriend for dinner. We talked and it brought up some very emotional, um, sensitive topics. I was crying on my way home and saw a car um, heading right for me. I swerved to avoid the head on collision. It um, hit the um, divider and the tree hit the divider then a tree i'm hurt bruised up a bit but so grateful i'm alive i did receive citations one which was unrelated to the incident which understandably but w but what was most surprising is that the car that almost hit me just drove away Karen finishes by saying, I would like to stress it is important to understand your emotional state when driving. And may this be a reminder to all of us using um, using their seat belts. Mothers may be my guard. My mother may be my guardian angel, but the seat belt saved my life. And then it goes on to say, Karen Huger was involved in a scary crash this weekend. The officer is telling us she wrecked her car so badly it was no longer operable. A representative from Montgomery County Police tells TMZ the Real Housewives of Potomac star was driving a 2017 Maserati late Tuesday night in Potomac, Maryland, in which that was described as an aggressive manner, manner too fast for conditions, they say. Police say Huger struck a median and crosswalk sign at the intersection before continuing on and colliding with a parking sign off the roadway where the car came to a rest. We're told the airbag deployed in the car, but no other passengers were in the vehicle. No word on whether she or anyone else was injured. The car itself was um, allegedly damaged so badly it couldn't be driven and a tow truck was called to retrieve it. The extent of the damage is not yet um, known. Cops say um, HK received multiple citations, unclear exactly what they were for at the time, but we're told she was not arrested. We're, um, we've reached out to Huger, a main cast member of all eight seasons of RHOP, um, about the incident. So far, no word back. And this was published on um, the 20th of this week. All right, y'all. So when I first initially saw this about Karen, I legit just assumed that Karen was driving recklessly. Maybe she was on her phone. Maybe she was speeding, trying to get home. But I didn't think like DUI didn't come into my head. Like legit, like DUI did not even pop up in my head. I was just like, I'm glad she's okay. But it's given that like she was speeding and going too fast because the exact words they use is aggressive manner and too fast for conditions. So I'm like, oh, she definitely had to be speeding. Maybe she was on her phone. But then that was posted like I want to say around like maybe like four in the afternoon. But next thing you know, right around 10 o'clock. It was posted by TMZ again, and this is coming by way of Jay's reality blog, where they were like, TMZ is also reporting that hashtag Karen Hugert has been charged with a DUI plus six traffic violations, including negligence and reckless driving, driving over a driving over the speed limit and driving with a suspended registration. Hashtag R.H.O.P. And when I saw that, I said, Karen, I said a DUI, a DUI. I said, Karen, no. And my thing is, is Karen is 60 years old. The way I got on Shannon, I'm going to have to get on Karen. You have too much money where you can call a Lyft, an Uber, a taxi. There's too many ride share options where you don't have an excuse to drive drunk. Like you just don't. You don't have any more excuses to drive drunk. And it's just like, Karen, Karen, like for real. And then... I was just like, girl. And then when TMZ released the re released the pictures, I was like, Karen, I hope it's not a video. But the pictures don't do it any better. Like, when I tell you Karen clipped the hell out of this tree, like, she knocked the bark off of it. And the thing about it that, that I pointed out or I picked up is that, like, the side in which she hit was by a sidewalk. And I'm like, had people been walking their dogs late at night or just walking by themselves or jogging or walking with friends, you could have killed them. Like this could have had deadly consequences for Karen and those people if they were there. And I'm just like, Karen, you're you're too old. And then it makes sense why they always got her blue eyes, because blue eyes was supposed to be her driver. And before Karen even was part of Real Housewives of Potomac, she already had gotten a DUI before someone posted that information. And I'll read it to you guys in a few minutes. But this is the other TMZ article from their update. It says Karen Huger 
scary Tuesday night crash seemed to be le seemed to left a mark on the area, with the first photos from the scene appearing to show just as close Karen got to came to a disaster. The pictures obtained by TMZ show where the Real Housewives star swerved off the road in Potomac, Maryland, leaving lots of skid marks, torn up grass before slamming into a tree, taking a big chunk out of the bark with her. We've confirmed those were taken at the specific location um, mentioned in the court documents that laid out all Karen's charges and traffic violations. The photo and videos were given um, were given no, it says the photos and videos we got um, give a clear indication of how serious the wreck were. Honing in on the point of the contact where Karen went off the road where she says she did uh, avoid an oncoming car. This is after having a very emotional dinner with a friend. Police, however, tell a different story. The Montgomery County PD now offering another update on what they say went down with Karen in the incident. Um, as we reported, cops have told us Karen hit the median and uh, the street sign last late Tuesday night while driving her 2017 Maserati. And we're not we are told a security guard in the neighborhood saw the whole thing and called the police. A C, I don't know, an MCPD rep says fire rescuers and police officers responded to the call with the ambulance. But the police say Karen um, refused to go into the hospital or be evaluated. We're told um, KH was then taken into custody and transported to the district station with police telling us she was actually arrested and cited for a DUI that evening, but wasn't booked into jail. Instead, um, telling us she was released to her husband Raymond. Karen was also cited for other traffic violations um, before being released. Huger um, has, um, hasn't addressed the DWI slash DUI charges yet. The only thing she seemed to mention to us Wednesday was the car is going straight for her while she was driving, which she says caused her to swerve to dodge it, explaining she miraculously walked away without injuries. Given um, how the crash scene looks, Huger may actually have a gardening angel on her side, like she said. Girl, she got six citations. And then I was like, how come if they give you a DUI, I'm like, aren't you supposed to automatically like get arrested? But from what people are saying is that in Maryland, if you refuse, because they also, the word is Karen refused to do a breathalyzer. And they're like, if you automatically refuse to do a breathalyzer, then they cite you as like being like drunk, giving you a DUI. And I was like, Karen, 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 Karen. And she has yet to address it. My thing about it is, is that the ladies have been saying that Karen has been a drunk for a, a long time. If we going to keep it a book, you know, Robin said that Karen likes to call them and drunk like drunk call them we have that one season i think it was season six where um giselle and karen were arguing at wendy's house and she was like i'm gonna tell all your truth karen your drunk truth and that's when karen said girl shut up and they started arguing back and forth and then you know sharice and her sharice has always even last season and i said this online sharice stories may have been a lot last season but i didn't think she was lying i think she was definitely telling the truth about karen but because people don't like sharice i like sharice they don't want to listen to what she has to say same thing with giselle and robin because we don't like the person we don't don't really want to listen to what they have to say and I think it was actually really messed up that people are bringing back this old um comment that Sharice left on a page because it says happy Sunday on it and this happened on a Tuesday but I'm gonna read it because it's being shopped around but you can definitely tell that this is old it says um she can keep practicing her lies in the mirror as she prepares for the reunion so this is last year and she can um, keep wishing my coin would go away. They won't. At the end of the day, Truly Original and Bravo can continue cleaning up, um, cleaning her up to make her look like whatever her delusional mind wants to be. She makes good TV. The real reality is Karen Huger is still one of the local drunks of Potomac. Instead of thinking about me, she should think about going back to rehab and redo the program that she never completed many years ago. Happy Sunday, everyone. I definitely think this is last season because Sharice 
Sharice was at the reunion last season and we had Sharice be a part of the show a lot more but Sharice has been saying for a long time about Karen and her antics and like I said someone said Karen got a DUI before and this is coming from Bossub I ha don't know where the article is but I'm going to post the screenshots that I found online but it says Real Housewives of Potomac Karen is speaking out about the time cops popped her for driving while intoxicated. Huger was arrested nearly 10 years ago for driving drunk after she had had a celebratory dinner and was on her way back to Potomac's uh, Maryland home. I pulled over the man of two, the mom of two exclusively told Bossop, technically I wasn't driving. I, I was pulled over into a parking area where you should not park. I turned off the car and and I called my husband. However, the teddy bear cops found me first and I called my I collected my DUI. What the hell is a teddy bear cop, Karen? The reality um, show star later pleaded guilty to driving while impaired by alcohol and received probation. But Huger, who has become infamous uh, for her love of etiquette and proper manners, hasn't let that incident get her down and says that the experience helped make her the woman she is today. I said when I told the um, when I said I said when I took this project, I own everything about me that makes me me. She said, what makes me me? This woman people can look at. You have ups and downs, curves. The uh, the things is in life you still stand and I'm still standing. That is something Karen would say because that, that was a bunch of dribble. So Candace actually commented on this because she is currently doing the Angela Yee's podcast. So I'm going to play that for you guys. And then we're just going to discuss. Way home. Yes. Um, I hate this. I hate that we have, to, we have to talk about this. Karen, we love you. I reached out to her, but she's clearly, you know, with family, I'm sure, and trying to figure it out. Her mom was her light. That was like her, her guiding light. And I know how important her mother was to her and her mom passing. She goes through waves where she has too much emotion that she really can't handle, can't manage. So I can understand how she could maybe have been driving and I've been emotional and crying in the car and had to pull over so I wouldn't crash. So it just, it's unfortunate that it got to the point where she had to, you know, injure herself potentially and fuck up her car or jack up her car. Sorry. Ooh. Ray J, is Ray J I blame you for that. Okay. Uh, and well, you know what? As a friend, that was my fault. Yes. Well, according you're to, a bad influence. According to online court records, she's also, that and I, I'm sorry. she's also facing one count of DUI over yeah. that wreck. And she has to make a mandatory court appearance to answer for it where she's facing an additional DWI charge as well. Everybody gets bad around me, huh? It's, it's yeah, your fault. Do. No, but Karen, we love you. And I'm going to check on and you, And thankfully, nobody was hurt. Yes. And that's always the main thing. Sorry, yes. Karen. We're praying for you. Well, let's talk about this whole entire situation, y'all. I'm disappointed in Karen, and I feel like, again, like, you're 60 years old. There's no justifiable reason why you got behind that wheel. Like, if you legit were having an emotional breakdown, you should have stayed with your friend, or you should have called an Uber or a Lyft. Or if you were drunk, you should have called an Uber or a Lyft. You make too much money, and you're too old to not not do that and then the fact that you already had a DUI on your record and then you're driving on expired registration you're refusing to do a breathalyzer like it's just all bad all around the only way I could see Karen actually like getting out of this is if she's actually honest with the audience and with the ladies and tells them like hey I've been struggling with drinking for such and such time or you know I really made a mistake because for a while the girls have been alluding to Karen possibly being a drunk like a pot and, and I think that's why Karen doesn't like Sharice is because I think Karen and Sharice used to get drunk together and have good times and then now that Karen is the grand dame she just doesn't want to like be around somebody or associated with that part of her life anymore but I definitely feel like they used to kick it like that but I honestly think that like there's no excuse like I don't know how Karen is going to work this if I was her I probably would sit out next season and say like you know I'm trying to get my life together and then come back for season 10 or I would actually or she can play it and be actually honest with the ladies and be like hey I've been struggling with drinking or that night I just I, I did too much and it, you know I thought I could handle it and I couldn't because she should be held accountable because if this was anybody else other than Karen and I mean anybody else on the cast whether it be Ashley Candace Robin Giselle or Wendy the fans would be 
annihilating that person. They would be trying to take them out, telling us they don't need to be on the show versus it being Karen because she is a fan favorite. So I do think her feet need to be held to the fire and she needs to own what she did. But I also do hope she gets the help that she needs because again, you're 60 years old. Like, you made like such a horrible mistake that could have ended your life and somebody else's life. And again, you make too much money. It's like, it's compounded. You're too old and then you make too much money where it's not gonna cost you that much. Like that's a drop in the bucket for you to get a lift to drive you home and then come and pick up your car. Like you gotta make better decisions. You gotta make way better decisions. You have a husband, you got two kids. Like, I bet you Raven and your son would have been distraught if they lost their mama in a car accident and it was because of her fault. And I don't believe that story that Karen is trying to shop about like somebody like was was driving on the wrong side of the road. I honestly feel like Karen was on the wrong side of the road. A car was coming. She realized what she was doing and she overcorrected. And that's what made her hit the tree. Because I feel like if there's actually a guard that says that they were there, then I feel like they probably would have tried to corroborate Karen's story about seeing another car. But since they didn't, I genuinely think that Karen was on the wrong side of the road. But hopefully she figure out how to maneuver this correctly. But I ultimately like screw the show. Like if you if Karen seriously has a drinking problem or issues with alcohol, she needs to get help more than anything. I definitely think you could tell the show because Luann did it when Luann was like, I need to take time off for herself. You could probably take Karen. I feel like is the um, her and Giselle are probably the only people that could probably tell the show I need to take a season off and they would be OK and be guaranteed to have their jobs back once they get better so if I was Karen I would take a take a season off and get my life together or I would just be completely honest when next season comes around and own every and anything that the ladies throw at me so Candace sharing her thoughts rubbed some people the wrong way. I felt like Candace was very neutral in her opinion, but people wanted Candace to like go in on Karen. And I think the thing is, is I think Karen, Candace either learned from her situation with Robin because she said she reached out to Karen, but she hasn't responded. And I think she's just like, you know what? I'm just going to keep my mouth closed and play, play the field. Like, you know, be neutral. She also knows if she go after Karen, it's a done deal because fans only tolerate Candace. I like Candace, but I fans only tolerate Candace because her adversaries are Giselle and Robin. Had Cand if Candace goes after somebody that has more fan like clout, then she would be done. But I don't think that's the play play she was coming from. I think she does genuinely care about Karen. And I don't think she wants to run her name through the mud unless she gets the full entire story. And since her and Karen haven't had a conversation, then I think her response was the right response to have until you find out what it is. You know what I mean? So y'all, I was about to just end the video here and keep it pushing. But then I started to see a bunch of like notifications pop up on my um, on my phone. And I was like, what is going on? Y'all, I get on Twitter. Why is there an article by people with this title? John Jansen sues ex Shannon Bador for $75,000. She allegedly borrowed for a facelift exclusive. I said, girl, what the what? going on <laughs> what that's messy that is messy this this, this is the type of drama i want to see on my housewife show because <laughs> what is this but let's read this article it says badora and jansen dated for three and a half years before splitting in january of 2023 it says Shannon Storms Bador relationship with John Jansen is costing her more than just headache. On Wednesday, the Real Housewives of Orange County star's ex-boyfriend filed a lawsuit in Orange County Superior Court against her for breach or oral contract and promissory fraud, among other things, to recover $75,000 he claimed she failed to repay him. In the complaint obtained by People, Jansen, 61, alleges that Bador, 59, turned to him for financial support in early 2022 borrowing forty thousand dollars via wire transfer on january the 23rd 2022 for a facelift procedure then on may 20th 2023 he gave her another three hundred and fifty thousand dollars via personal check i ain't know john had it like that 
In both instances, Jansen claims in the documents, um, Bedora agreed to pay back the loan with interest. Despite multiple requests in 2023 and in 2024, Jansen claims she has yet to. Jansen is seeking full amount plus uh, current interest costs and reasonable attorney fees. People has reached out to a representative for Bedora for comment. The suit will come as a surprise to our HOC fans who have heard through um, who have heard through Bedora in the past that Jansen was financially dependent on her during their time together. She also said, according to Jansen's counsel, that the money was a gift, um, something her ex disputes and allegedly has proof otherwise. Miss Bedora's defense that Mr. Jansen paid her the $75,000 as a gift is completely meritless, which is which there are emails and text messages will show Edison K. McClellan, uh, Oh, I guess that's John's a lawyer tells people. Mr. Jansen is saddened that Mrs. Bedora's unwillingness to repay the loan made it necessary to file a lawsuit. Jansen and Bedora dated for three and a half years. He pulled the plug on their romance in November of 2022, a week after filming rap for season 17 of the hit Bravo series. The two remained friends, but stopped speaking in late September, not long after she was arrested for a DUI. He has since moved on finding love with Bedora's now co-star, uh, Alexia Bellino, 47. The two met through mutual friends in November of 2023. People confirmed the two were dating that December, sharing an exclusive photo of them posting arms um, arm in arm. The same month, Bedora slammed Jansen and the press for dating Bellino, telling E! News in December that she was hurt and still trying to figure out how to process their romance after Jansen told her he didn't want to be in, a, in the public eye anymore. But Jansen insisted his romance with Bellino is not about fame. I've been accused of wanting to be in front of the camera, but you'll have to watch the show and see if that's true, he told People. Earlier this month at the Direct TV streaming with the star's author, Oscar viewing party where he and Bellino made their red carpet couple debut. You won't really see him, Bellino said. We're focused on each other and our future, not his show, and we couldn't be happier or more in love. Y'all, this is messy. <laughs> this is so messy. <laughs> ah! But I feel like two ways about this whole situation, and I think it's because. Part of me is like, if you couldn't afford to lose the money, then you shouldn't have given it to Shannon. And I'm also feeling like, okay, would you have be, would you be asking for this money back if you and Shannon were together? And if the answer is no, then I don't think you should get it back. Now, if you were going to be asking for this money while y'all were together, that's different. But I'm of the belief he wouldn't. On top of that, it's kind of feeling like, you should like I'm confused because like they said in the article Shannon made it seem like she was footing the bill for everything and John didn't have any money but if he really does have emails and text messages of him actually giving her $75,000 over the span of like a couple of months then she's gonna probably have to give that man back his money and I slightly feel bad for for Shannon because I'm just like dang girl you you and your man broke up you are distraught and like totally upset about that on top of that now you got alexia filming again so you got to deal with you know the new woman and then you got that d that dui which was horrible it's like a lot of things are happening for shit and all at once and i feel bad but i also want to see it play out i also want to see it play out but i wonder if he is going to get his money back a feeling like a part of me feels like he's not but if he really does have text messages proving that shannon promised to give that money back then he might get his money but i just wanted to talk about this because this is messy to me like i was like this is shenanigans and the reason why is just like all of this is happening and they're filming. They're actually filming. So like this is not like what's happening with Portia and Simon where they're not filming Atlanta. They are currently filming OC. So I know this is going to be on the show and I'm ready to see Alexia and Shannon get into it, uh, into it about it. Because I do feel like Shannon is probably going to bring it up to Alexia. Are we going to see Alexia, are we going to see Shannon breaking down about it and Alexia talk about it? Either way, I'm invested. 
But yeah, y'all, that is it. That is all. Remember to be bravely authentic and definitely hop down in the comments below and give me your thoughts on everything that I have discussed today because I'm interested in your thoughts. And I'm out, y'all. Deuces. Deuces.